Tonight, millions of video chat images hacked by spy agencies. Why one in five Mac users are at risk. And is Amazon close to streaming music service? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 33 for Thursday, February 27th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up... The UK's surveillance agency, the GCHQ, collected pictures from millions of private Yahoo video chats, according to a report today in the Guardian newspaper based on documents obtained by the gift that keeps on giving Edward Snowden. In a program codenamed Optic Nerve, the GCHQ captured the pictures through the agency's network of internet cable taps, then saved them to agency databases starting in 2008, continuing through at least 2012. Most of the images captured were not of suspects, and in fact, targets, identities, and nationalities were not known by the agency. The GCHQ used the photos for testing face recognition systems, among other things. The sexual content of some Yahoo chat sessions seems to have vexed GCHQ analysts who said in the documents that as much as 11% of the Yahoo webcam imagery contained, quote, undesirable nudity. The agency claims Optic Nerve did not break UK law. Apple won't patch the Snow Leopard version of OS X. The company declined yesterday to offer a security update for the four-and-a-half-year-old operating system. Unfortunately, Snow Leopard represented 19% of Macs in use as of the end of January. One reason for the high user base for Snow Leopard is that it was the last version of OS X able to run on Macs equipped with 32-bit Intel processors. Users with such systems cannot upgrade, and without security updates, one out of every five Mac users are now easy targets for every new security exploit that comes along. Recode is reporting that Amazon might be readying a music streaming service to challenge the likes of Spotify, RDO, and others. This is according to industry sources, and it actually isn't the first time that Amazon has been said to be pushing such a service. Sources do say that Amazon isn't yet close to finalizing the deal, thanks to Amazon's pursuit of a steep discount on pricing that the labels charge services like this. But it's conceivable to imagine Amazon Prime, with its previously teased price hike of up to $40 per month and instant video access, to someday also include music streaming as part of its service to its members. Now coming up, the app that records silence for 4 minutes and 33 seconds paying homage to a famous composer. And next, 3D printers are in the news almost every day. Cena Brewster from GigaOM is here to talk about the latest breakthroughs. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, your own terms, from industry experts. With a lynda.com subscription, members get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering a wide range of technical skills, creative techniques, and business strategies. Want to improve your photography, master new software, boost your web design skills, or even learn programming? At lynda.com, you'll find top quality videos on hundreds of different subjects. You can watch from your computer, your tablet, or mobile device. The instructors are accomplished professionals. They're experts in their field who are passionate about teaching. And each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or just jump on to find a quick answer. So here's what you can do. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library. Or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses for free for seven days. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. All right. So now I'm joined by Sina Brewster, staff writer at GigaOM, to talk about 3D printers. Welcome to the show, Sina. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So there's been a lot of breakthroughs recently. You've actually written about a lot of these stories on uh, 3D printers as of late. Uh, faster 3D printers, 3D printing pens, virtual reality glasses connected to a 3D printer. What would you say uh, is the most interesting breakthrough that you've seen? So for a long time, 3D printing has about been about printing plastic or a little bit more rarely metal 
or uh, ceramics, but one of the things that we're seeing happen very quickly now is a whole range of new materials that you can 3D print in. So uh, stuff like carbon fiber, um, uh, fiberglass, or just these really unusual materials that have been very difficult to work with. And the cool part about that is when you apply it to 3D printing, it opens up new things to print. So in the future, we could be printing phones or other electronics and combining them with really crazy materials in new ways that you can never do that before. So a great example recently was the Mark Forged Mark I printer, which mm. um, you could even print in Kevlar and that opens up stuff like, you know, bulletproof vests or very unusual applications for 3D printing right now. Absolutely. And being able to print much larger objects as opposed to these tiny little collectibles that, are, you know, are, are maybe paperweights more than anything else. Yes, definitely. Um, now, as a part of uh, Project Aura, uh, Google's teaming up with 3D Systems to develop a fast way to 3D print customized smartphone parts. What do you think the challenges are with doing something like this? So as you kind of got at right now, most 3D printers are kind of small and they actually are very slow. So um, a big challenge with tackling doing a mass production of an object is how can you print all these very, very quickly? Mm -hmm. And so people like Shapeways right now, they tackle it by just having a bunch of giant printers and packing as many objects into one printer as a, at a time as you can. But considering the resources Google has, I would love to see them work together to say print fast or create a faster 3D printer, which has been very challenging up until this point. Absolutely. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. And uh, switching gears a little bit, MakerBot announced their Replicator Mini 3D printer. That's shipping this spring. It's going to sell for under $1,400. How mainstream do you think 3D printing is becoming right now? So it's kind of a tricky question to answer. It's been sure. very difficult to track how many people exactly have 3D printers, but it is changing very quickly. And obviously the drop in price and ease of use is helping a lot to bring it to more people. I think the mini is a great example of, we are getting to that point where more people will be willing to buy it. Um, that sub thousand dollar mark, which a lot of other companies are already hitting. But um, what MakerBot is doing is they're really tackling some points that have been very difficult um, for people to work with 3D printers because of so like, for example, you have a print bed and you have a print nozzle and you've had to kind of manually match up the two in the past and they're making it very easy to do that yourself. Um, and then kind of some built-in features that if a print job fails, it'll stop itself and help you fix it without just totally ruining your entire print job. So they're doing a good thing right now, making it more accessible by making it easier to use. Absolutely. That's super exciting. It'll be really cool to see, even in the next couple of years, how far 3D printing is going to be taken uh, just on a, a wide mainstream uh, level. Thank you so much, Sina, for joining us. How can people uh, connect with you and, and read your work? Sure. I'm on, on Twitter at SinaJB, that's S-I-G-N-E-J-B, or at gigom.com. Right on. Really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. You bet. Now, finally, this is close to my heart here. Composer John Cage had the idea that any sound could constitute music. And as such, one of his most controversial compositions, the three-piece movement titled 433, instructed any number of instruments uh, to sit silently for four minutes and 33 seconds so as to let the sound of the silent room filled, uh, filled with bodies make the music. That is at the heart of a new iOS app released this month by the John Cage Trust. Now you can be transported to symphonic halls around the world where this piece was performed and recorded for your listening pleasure. As if that's not enough, you too can record your own version of this complex composition from wherever you happen to be and share that masterpiece with others. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a new piece I've titled Three Seconds Until I Wrap Up the Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.